Now we're gonna see po local policy routing in action, that is. And I've added three loopbacks to router one for this lab. All of the previous configuration for regular policy routing, all those commands have been left on here because we need to find out if local policy routing and policy routing uh, mess each other up if they don't play well together. So we're gonna have both of them running here on router one. I've added three loopbacks to router one, uh, the 1111 slash 24 uh, address for loopback one, loopback 15 at 15111 slash 24, and loopback 50 using the oh so clever 5111 slash 24 address. Now we're gonna send some trace routes from router one from sourcing the packets from each one of those three loopbacks to see what path each one's taking. We expect it all to be the same. And what we saw in the previous video, we expect it to be 123.2. But let's go ahead and make absolutely sure. So we're on router one. And I want to show you another couple of options with trace route. You know, in the last video, we weren't really worrying about the source because we were on router five and there was only one interface up. But here we're going to send packets from the same router but from different interfaces or using different source IP addresses. You know how to use an extended ping, but there is also an extended trace route. And it just drops down, looks pretty familiar, right? Looks like a ping. And I'll do source address here of all ones, the first loopback I just created. I'll keep the defaults for all of those. Not quite as many choices here. And you can see the trace route is going to give us the result. The next hop is 123.2 and then 234.4. So it's exactly what we expected to see given the results of the last lab. Now, what you can also do here, if you're just going to set target and source address, is just put it all in one line, which is what I really like to do. So we can run a trace route 4444 and use the source option here. And then we'll say, you could, you could name the interface, I could put interface loopback 15, but I just prefer to use the address. Same result, same thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and send one with a source of 5111. And since we certainly expect it to be the same, it's 123.2. So what we'd like to do in this lab is have the first two loopbacks use 123.3 as the next hop if their traffic is destined for 4444. Loopback 50, on the other hand, should continue to use 123.2 as its next hop for all traffic uh, now and in the future. So we're not going to mess with Loopback 50 at all. So it sounds like we need to write maybe a two-line ACL for this one. And that's not going to be a problem for us. We know how to do that. So we'll do an access list 101 here and do a permit IP host 1111. That's our source and host 4444 for the destination. Now I need to add another line this time around. 101 permit IP host 15111 host 4444. Looks good so far. I don't even need to mention 5111 because everybody else is going to be denied. So let's get that route map written and that's going to look pretty familiar. That's no problem for us either. I'm going to have to call it something different. I'll call it next top underscore R3 because I know how much everybody hates underscores. And we'll do a match IP address 101. And oh, for are you kidding me? Address. How could that be invalid? I wrote it. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do a set IP next top 172.12.123.3. Router's got a lot of nerve if you ask me. So ACL, no problem. Route map, no problem. Applying this to an interface. We got a problem because what kind of interface are we always applying policy routing to? An inbound interface. We're always policy routing traffic as it comes in. However, this traffic is already in router one, so to speak. It's actually being generated on router one. So if I'm setting the next hop to 123.3, at what point in our network should I be setting policy routing? I should be setting it exactly where we're setting it right now because it doesn't make any sense to go down to router two and say, oh, okay, traffic coming in from router one and headed for router four is loop back. We're gonna send that back to router one and router one can send it over to router three. We don't wanna do that. And if the traffic's already getting to router three somehow, then there's no use in doing any policy routing. So we are on the correct router. And of course, that's always the first battle with policy routing. And it's a battle that you'll win on the exam and in the network room is where do I configure this? 
So we do want to configure this on router one, but we can't use regular policy routing. We have to use what we call local policy routing because that is going to be applied only to packets that are generated on the local router. So for that, what do I do then if I don't go to an interface? Where do I, where do I apply it? I apply it globally. And the command is IP local, ah, IP local policy, and then everything else is going to look pretty darn familiar. IP local policy route map, next hop. Whoops, I almost put the underscore in the wrong place. You were already laughing at me. Next hop, and that's it. So far, so good, but you know what we got to do? We got to send three trace routes and make sure that's working properly. So we will start with 1111, maybe. Maybe I won't. Let's try that again. Trace route 4444 four, four, four. source 1111. Touch of latency there will take care of that. And you can see the next hop for that one is now 123.3. So, so far, our policy routing looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put 15111 in there. And that looks good too. Next hop is 123.3, exactly what we needed. And now. Simulate a drum roll, please. Best I could do. You can see the next hop is 123.2. So our policy routing is working absolutely correctly. Our local policy routing, that is. You know, you can see that once you're comfortable, once you start using more of the set values, you could just manipulate the heck out of your traffic. I mean, you could make this traffic sing and dance and go to exactly the next hop you want. Once you're working with BGP, you can change attributes with them. Uh, policy routing really it really gets results. I really like working with it. Now, speaking of pure policy routing, which is what we did in the previous video, I mentioned that I left that on, all the configurations on there. So I've written local policy routing on router one in addition to it. So does policy routing, is, is it still working? Well, we didn't overwrite anything. I can run show route map. And you can see that we've got two route maps in here, next hop for the previous one video, uh, next hop R3, the one we just wrote. Also notice the number of policy routing matches are, list, are listed at the bottom of each one of those. And you can see we've matched 11 packets in one and 12 in another. So let's go over to router five and do a trace route on 123.2. And you can see that is still going to 123.2. That's the traffic that we didn't policy route. And now if we do a trace route of 4444, you can see the next hop is indeed 123.3. And that takes care of business. So the policy routing that we wrote in the previous video, it's still all valid. Writing a local policy doesn't invalidate uh, any previous routing policy that you've written. So that is it for this section, actually, not just it for policy routing. So take an even deep breath, deeper breath than usual, and I'll see you in the next section of the course.